Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast, episode 85. Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast with your host, Jack Mountain Bushcraft School founder and master main guide, Tim Smith. I'm your host, Tim Smith. I'm a registered master main guide and have been a full-time outdoor instructor and guide since founding the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School in 1999. We help people become more skilled, more knowledgeable, more experienced, and more confident in the natural world through our bushcraft and guide training semester programs and multi-week canoe and snowshoe expeditions. You can check out the show notes to all of our podcasts at blog.jackmtn.com. If you're interested in learning more about our college-accredited and GI Bill-approved programs, visit the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School on the web at jackmtn.com. And check out our online network and digital learning academy at bushcraftschool.com. Welcome back to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. It's been a little while since we've done one of these, and geez, the world sure looks a whole lot different. Um, I'm joined today uh, by Christopher Russell, and we've got a big announcement from Christopher. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. It's the first really sunny day we've had in probably a week, so I am uh, spent the morning outside, and now I'm sitting here watching the wind blow. It's pretty nice. How about yourself? Yeah, it's a very blustery day here. Big white caps on the lake, uh, but doing good. You know, I, probably doing better than I have any right to be doing. Yeah. Um, so tell me your big announcement. What's the big news? So the big news is that in uh, sort of in pairing with the Jack Mountain podcast, I've started a School of the Forest podcast. Um, the Jack Mountain one is often... You know, it takes place up at camp, and we're often talking about, um, you know, what's going on up there. And I thought it would be interesting to start one that sort of brought in people that aren't in our industry, but are in sort of peripheral roles. So, you know, the example that comes to mind most is that we use, you know, the human earth system. We talk about it all the time. And I have a friend down here who works at a place called the Rich Earth Institute, and I'm going to have him on the podcast. They're doing sort of a human earth style thing, but on a really big, almost the whole city of Brattleboro wide scale. And I think that it's important and interesting to have sort of different viewpoints on systems that we, uh, that we use a lot, even down to our nature studies talking about, um, you know, we talk a lot about how it's the first person sort of ecology, but for, there are people that take that and go way deep with it and learn a lot of interesting stuff that maybe we don't cover because we're so focused on just our, um, on our, on our approach to it. And I just, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to start having more and more people on that have insight that we don't have. Yeah, I think it's a great idea and I'm looking forward to listening to it. In fact, I have already, how many episodes do you have, uh, available, available for folks to listen to now? We have three episodes up, and I'm going to be recording another one on friction fire this week um, from a, a really scientific standpoint, so that'll be interesting. Cool. Uh, That's great. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to doing more of them. They're a lot of fun. And we will have uh, – we will obviously post links in the show notes so that you can get right over to listen to Christopher. Is it is it on like the – the uh, iTunes and and whatevers of the world that sort of aggregate podcasts. Do so you have that up and running? Yes, I do. As of right now, I think it's on Stitcher, Spotify, and iTunes. Oh, nice. That's great. Yep. Yeah, it's so easy to uh, – it gets easier all the time to, to listen to podcasts, to find podcasts. I, I love it, actually. You know, I, every time I'm walking the dog, I'm usually listening to something and, and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy them. So I'm excited to dive right in. Who are the guests that you've had so far? Uh, so the first one we did, I recorded um, on our trip up to Uje Bugamu. Um, if you're going to, so that was to spend time with our Cree friends. Um, so that was just, we had people on that were on the trip talking about their sort of experience, seeing how um, our friends live. The second one was with, um, I guess you could sort of call him, yeah, a coworker of mine up at the Southern Vermont Natural History Museum. He's the director, Michael Claw, and he, uh, yeah, he had a lot of really interesting things to say about sort of getting getting young people involved um, on a firsthand basis using museums to get them interested and then turn them loose on the outdoors, which is a really cool thing. 
Um, and then we had our good friend Ed Butler on to talk about uh, sustainable hunting practices and how how young people can use that as a way of uh, interacting with the ecosystem that they're a part of. Oh, cool. Yeah, I look forward to... Uh, I started listening to the episode with Ed the other day, but I was having technical difficulties. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, which just means <laughs> that like the cat walked across the thing I was listening to and shut it off, and then I had to chase the cat around. And, <laughs> you know, it just... Uh, way to have the cat chasing the cat power the thing playing the podcast right like, that would be that's the dream but i'm yeah. not uh i don't think i'm technically qualified to figure that <laughs> out <laughs> yeah i did look into that years ago I actually bought plans like my dream when my kids were real little was always to have an exercise bike uh with an electrical generator attached figuring that if they got into like video games or something my plan would be to have them you want it, You can play all day if you want, but you got to ride the bike to generate the power to do it. Uh, but it, then you work it out, and hey, it's going to cost like a thousand dollars in parts and stuff. And <laughs> for that amount of money, you can buy ten hundred watt solar panels that would power everything, and you know wouldn't break down constantly like a like a homebrew exercise bike generator probably <laughs> would. So. So that plan just went on the back burner, but yeah, who knows? Maybe someday still, you know, you see those, uh, have you ever seen like there, there's a great book called the, the human powered home. And it's all about like using our kinetic energy to power different things. But I think it was in there. I saw some farmer somewhere. I can't remember, um, early onset senility. Can't remember anything. But some farmer somewhere had cows in a barn on treadmills and they would generate electricity to help run the farm. I, I always thought that was a neat idea. Have you ever, this is, this is not at all related, but is sort of so. Um, have you ever seen like the, the breed of dog that's now extinct that they bred specifically to turn spits in kitchens? No. How, yeah, how, would, I have, a, how would I have seen it if it's extinct? Well, it's, uh, it's one of those 3 like, a.m. Christopher's on Wikipedia discoveries. Um, oh, okay. I thought you were insinuating that I had one in a cage in the closet behind me. No, 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 no. I just, yeah, I think that that's maybe if there's, there's any, any hope for us having a spit in our kitchen up at Jack Mountain, I think that's, we need to start breeding dogs is kind of what I'm getting at. If like, you I mean, can figure out a way to make it work by a dog that just lays around all day, my dog could run that thing, you know, 24 seven if she doesn't have to get up. Yeah. If you could find a way to let my dog run for two minutes and power it for the whole day, then she could do it. But that's about all she's got in her now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I have a picture I took of, uh, you know, this sort of – you've heard that old trope of the – you're the average of the couple of people you spend all your time with. Uh-huh. And before the, like, corona lockdown – Every day when if I was home alone, everybody's at school, it was me, the cat and the dog. And I'm like, I'm, I'm becoming more like the two of you. So there's uh, there's more truth to that than you think, <laughs> because I bet the hair that you're accumulating on your body by spending so much time with them, you are slowly you're, like your DNA is slowly becoming more and more cat and dog. There has been a rash of Bigfoot sightings around here when I'm out recreating. So, <laughs> Just him stuck with dog and cat hair stuck to him. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is a short episode. We're going to cut it off right here. But yeah. I really encourage everybody to, to go subscribe and listen to Christopher's podcast and uh, definitely give him some feedback. Yeah, and if you're a person who, um, you know, is sort of, you think you fit what we're talking about, where you're sort of, you know, maybe you're a biologist or an engineer and you're working towards more, you know, sustainable living styles or um, some way of maybe you're the person that has those cows that are generating electricity. I, we would I would love to hear from you um, because, uh, yeah, it'd be great to have more and more interesting people on that podcast. So reach out if you are um, and look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Well, if you've enjoyed this podcast, I know we took a big hiatus for, what was the last one, February? So two months about. Uh, but if, yeah, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. And I encourage everybody out there in podcast land to visit us on the web at bushcraftschool.com. It's our online community. We've got free digital courses you can take right now we've got one on field botany we've got one on understanding the weather 
Um, and you can just also, if you're bored at home because of the coronavirus, you can just go on there and interact with us. You know, it's not like our regular website, which is sort of like a big online magazine or brochure. This is very interactive, uh, and we encourage anybody who's interested to jump on board. So check us out there, bushcraftschool.com. Christopher, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, Yeah, we will definitely talk soon. Okay. You have been listening to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. For more information on our professional wilderness guide training programs that are college accredited and GI Bill approved, visit us on the web at jackmtn.com.